mini cat. On this episode, it's gonna start in the kitchen. In my kitchen. We're gonna make some lactobacillus bacteria. And they're gonna end up in my garden up on the hill. Because they're really, really good for helping me break down my organic matter in my compost. And if I mix them with bananas or seaweed or chicken poo, I can make my own fertilizer. And I'm gonna show you how I do that on this episode. Just gonna use some rice and some water. See? So welcome back to the Weedy Garden. All you need is a bit of rice really. This is just jasmine rice that I've got here. And some water. About one and a half litres is fine. And I've got about half a kilo of rice here. Just pour the rice in. Pour these in. Oh no. So then, I just want to wash this rice now. So I'm just going to turn this around for a little while. Make sure I wash all the starch off it. That's the, what I want to get is that starchy water. That milky water is what I want to keep. Okay. That's enough. Okay, then I just put a nice little cloth on the top of this to keep the, uh, just to keep the insects out and the other germs out. So we can also breathe. And I'll just go and put it in a nice, cool, dark place. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that sit out there. So just put it in a dark cupboard and uh, somewhere nice and cool. And when it starts to smell sweet, that's when it's ready. But I'll get back to you on that one. This is my rice water after a week. So what we're gonna do is take this off. We're just gonna pour the rice water. About there. Alrighty, and we'll put this back in. Okay, so this is our rice water back in. Now we want to add the milk. The next step is the milk. And we want to use cow's milk. We don't want to use coconut milk, it's not going to work. Cashew milk, it's not going to work. Oat milk, it's not going to work. And any other plant-based milk, it's not going to work. One litre of milk. And then we can put our little top on again and we'll take it back outside and let it sit for another seven days. Okay, and then we'll leave it here for this camera to look at it for another seven days. What happens is when you put the milk in, the lactobacillus bacteria, they eat the lactose and then they secrete lactic acid and the lactic acid will kill all the other bacteria in your bottle. Then you're left with just the lactobacillus bacteria. Okay, so we got our Curd and whey. Okay. Uh, that's nice. I'll uh, give this one to the chooks. I'll take this up to the garden and um, we'll mix some molasses in with it. Just take this one up to the garden for the chooks. All right, but I want to tell you the story about this lactobacillus bacteria and what the story is. So when you get your rice and you make the rice water and you put your little cloth top on, what you're essentially doing is you're making a bacteria trap, right? All the bacteria in the air and everywhere, they're going to come in through the little cloth and into your, back, into your starchy water because they like to eat the starchy water from the rice, right? And although the lactobacillus bacteria do secrete lactic acid, there's still gonna be other bacteria in your rice water. So when you mix it with the milk, and the milk separates, what happens is the lactobacillus bacteria, they predominantly like the lactose, and the lactose in the milk makes them secrete more lactic acid, basically, which kills all the other bacteria in the, in the brew. So when you're finished with the separation of your milk, you're left with a beautiful lactobacillus bacteria colony. And so we, wanna, we can use these straight away, these are ready to use because these are the bacteria we're, we're using. But if we do that, we're going to use our bottle up and we're going to have to make some more. So I'm going to go up to the garden now and mix and use these and give them an environment where they can expand. And what they need to expand is space and food. And they love molasses. So we're going to feed them molasses and give them water, which will be their space. We're going to let it sit for another seven days so they can expand and populate our drum. 
So we'll just go up to the garden and we'll put these in the bacteria drum and do the last process. And then magically we're up in the garden. Okay, the next exciting step is to feed these little fellas, all right? And what they like to eat is molasses. I guess you could feed them sugar cane juice, they eat brown sugar, but with molasses there's lots of other minerals and, and nutrients in that, so it's really recommended to use molasses. And I use this one here. It's really important that it's unsulfured or blackstrap. Can you see that? Unsulfured blackstrap molasses. It means that it's unrefined. And there's two types of molasses you can get. See the stuff in the shops that they feed the animals, they put in some antibacterial and antifungi properties in the molasses so it lasts longer on the shelf. But if we put that in our bacteria brew, those antibacteria properties in the molasses is going to kill our bacteria. So it's really important. Blackstrap or unsulfured molasses. Okay, so we've got our we've got our bacteria here and we need something to put them in. So if you just imagine that I'm going to create a city and I'm going to fill all the supermarkets with food and I'm going to fill all the houses with com comfort comfortable living, I'm going to then transport a little amount, a little population of these inhabitants of my city and they're going to go in and start shopping and start living and multiply and have, have and, and, and just totally populate my my city, my drum, my bacteria drum. So very simple, and let's get on with it. This is a 20 litre drum, but I'm just gonna make a 10 litre portion. It's important that the drum is black drum because any kind of light is gonna cause the fungus and the, and, the, and the mold and stuff to grow inside. So we want it to be black out of the light. And we just pour our molasses in the whole bottle. There's about half a litre of molasses in that. I'll give it a good squeeze. <clears throat> we put the same amount away, a bottle full, like that. and what I'll do is I'll shake this nicely so we can get all that molasses out. Okay, do a bit of shaking, make my little ooh, bacteria juice cocktail, pour it in there. Okay, done, and now we just got to put water in, and that's the that's their space. So now they've got food. All they need now is space, and the space is the water. And this is a nine-liter watering can. So I've got half a liter of bacteria, half a liter of molasses, and nine liters of water. I'll just give that a squirt. <coughs> Get the last bit out, and then uh, I'll, I'll put the lid on. This is one of those home brewing drums. I think it's really a good idea to have a little tap on the bottom. It's a really good idea that you can, you've got a little rubber ring on here so you can seal it off because we don't want those bacteria to escape. No, I'm just kidding. We don't want anything inside. And what happens when it starts to ferment, right? It starts to build up gas. So we want to let that gas come out of our bottle. So we've got a little airlock. Looks like that. And then I just put a bit of water in the top. So see that, that water locks the air from anything coming in from the outside in, but it will let the air out. See? And I'll, I'll just say, you can hear the air coming out. If I squeeze the bottle, you can hear the bubbles. Because I've got my microphone here, ready? Oh, see? <laughs> okay, this has to now sit for seven days because every 20 minutes, the population of the bacteria doubles. So in 20 minutes time, we've got twice as many bacteria in as I just put in. And in 40 minutes, there's twice as many as that again. So in seven days, our drum is we've got billions and trillions and gazillions of lactobacillus bacteria. And after seven days, there's another step we can take to make our own fertilizer. But I'm, I want to make more. So I'm just going to leave this for a week so that'll be full of my bacteria. And then I can make my own fertilizer. I can use it for speeding up my compost. And I'll show you that in a second. So I've got all this whey left over. So I can put this in the fridge and I can call this my mother brew and that'll sit in my fridge for however long it wants to and the population won't increase because they've got no food and they've got no more room and the fridge and the cold temperature in the fridge will keep them kind of dormant and they can stay dormant for years. Spring's coming on, it's getting a bit warm up in the garden and this likes to be kept cool. 
So I'm going to take it down to my shed near the house where it's going to be kept cool seven more days. Mm. That smells good. The bacteria brews, they do grow mold on top. Um, if it's hot, it will rot. If it sees the light, but it keeps cold, it will still grow mold. So I want to keep it cool, I want to keep it dark, and I want to keep it undisturbed. So I'm just going to put the lid back on this, and, um, and it'll last for a long time. Making your own fertilizer with the bacteria. I've got my bacteria here in the drum. You can see there's a little bit of mold on top here, but it's totally fine. Mmm, it smells delicious. It smells like I could drink it actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and taste it. I don't know what it's going to taste like. Let's have a taste. I'm just going to have a taste with my finger first. Very sort of bitter. I wouldn't drink it, but it still smells good and cidery. These little bacteria in here, I, I kind of look at them like Pac-Man. Because like I've said before in my videos, everything that's growing is composing. Everything that's dead is decomposing. And all the cells and all the structure of the, all the plants and all the animals all have to decompose. And the things that do that is the bacteria and the fungus. And I see these as little Pac-Man. So I've got hundreds and trillions and millions and billions and gazillions of of these little Pac-Men in here and they're all hungry and they're all empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix some ingredients which is just some organic material but I've chosen which ones I want. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mix some coffee and some seaweed and some comfrey. I've been down collecting kelp and uh, I've washed it because I'm going to put it in the blender and I didn't want the sand to ruin my blender. And I grow my own beautiful comfrey, of course. And I've harvested a bunch of bananas, which I say a hand of bananas or a cluster of bananas and I've harvested many clusters of bananas. So I've got plenty of banana peels and that's my potassium. So if we think about the coffee, the comfrey and the seaweed, coffee's got nitrogen and the other two have got all sorts of micronutrients and, and minerals. And I'm probably gonna write a list of what you can find in those up here. And that's why I choose these instead of just a bunch of green grass because I wanna get lots of diversity. That's why I'm mixing these three together this time. And then I've got my bananas, which is my potassium. Everything that's getting going, everything for root development and leaf, leaf growth, the cell structure. And the bananas, that I'm gonna pour that on when it's time for when they're fruiting, when they're flowering. Now I use that for root vegetables, potatoes and sweet potatoes, carrots, onions and things like that. So getting right into it. Um, I've got two bins here, 10 liters each. I've got some molasses and it's very important you use blackstrap, blackstrap molasses. And we need a little breathing hole on the top of the bucket because when this starts to ferment, it's going to start to produce gas. So I just get a nail and put it through, put it through the lid. And then I put a bit of this micropore tape, which is tape that's breathable, but doesn't let anything in. It's micropore, which means the pores are very, very small. So nothing can get in the hole, but the air can escape. And now it can breathe when I lock it up, when I lock it up. Very important to wash the drums out. And it's very important to make sure they're clean. I even pour boiling water on it just to be sure. That's when I start. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna breed some bacteria because when they've got food to eat and they've got environment to breed and they've got sugar, then bacteria is just gonna breed and breed and breed. And all those little Pac-Men are gonna be in that bucket eating away all at all that organic matter. And I'll try to demonstrate. 
So imagine I'm a bacteria and this watermelon is the cell of a banana. When I eat it, some goes in my tummy, but some also goes in the bucket. That's plant food right there. What happens when you water it on is that you're releasing all the bacteria with their full bellies that are going to fart and poop and be eaten and pooped out and so on. They can even be sucked up into the root of a plant itself. The plant extracts the nutrients out of the bacteria and then spits out the empty shell so the bacteria can go back and fill up again. If you just throw, a if you just throw like a banana up against the root of a plant without the bacteria, the, the root can't get the, the, the nutrients out of the banana. The bacteria has to get it first, the bacteria gets it inside of it, and then what happens, because of photosynthesis, the roots underneath the ground are excreting sugar. Let's just call it sugar, kind of like molasses. The bacteria like that sugar, that's why we feed them that. And they come close to the roots, and then actually what happens is things called rhizophagy, ry rhizophagy. I don't know how you pronounce it absolutely correctly, but it's written on the screen up there. And what happens is the bacteria come in and get sucked into the root and then the root sort of kind of sprays this like amino acids I think on the cell of the bacteria on the, on the shell of the bacteria which dissolves the shell and releases that gooey stuff which we call plant food inside of the root which then goes up into the plant and then the shell of the bacteria what's left is kind of spit out through those little hairs on the side of the root and some of the bacteria they can regenerate and go back and start eating again and they'll come back again and get sucked in and it'll be a little cycle but some bacteria they kind of don't make it and they die so if you think of the ground underneath it's actually just like a huge a huge ground of dead organisms and dead bacteria shells anyway and that actually is the carbon that's been held in the soil so well, that's what I'm doing I'm going to breed these bacteria so when we pour them in the ground they're full of they're full of they're full of plant food so they're like full. So after this process, when you pour it out and mix it with water and water on the garden, you're watering on those bacteria that are like totally full of plant food. So and I've got some water here. And when you use the water, it's very important to think, don't use town water, because a lot of town water has chlorine or all sorts of things in it that kill bacteria, because they don't want people to drink the water out of the tap and get sick, which is understandable. It also kills the bacteria in your gut, just so you know. So it's not good to drink it. But this is from the sky, this water, straight out of the sky. It's actually hit the ground and run into the creek and then I've pumped it out of the creek into the tank. So that's clean. So what I want to do is I want to blend it up because the smaller you can chop it up, the more surface area there is, the more the bacteria can chew it up. I mean, that's pretty obvious. So we'll start with a bit of comfrey. About 20% of my bucket is going to be this organic material. I'm going to put about 100 milliliters of molasses in each of them. And I'll put 100 milliliters of bacteria juice as well. So I'll get some of this beautiful juice here. It's lactobacillus bacteria. So this is my mixture of comfrey, seaweed, and coffee. So I'll start with a bit of water. It, it makes a bit of noise sometimes, this solar thing. And that's what these things are. This is my solar panels that's running my, my solar. It's an EcoFlow. EcoFlow, and you can actually get a bit of a discount on the Weedy Garden website if you go in and look at that. All the things on the Weedy Garden website you can get a discount from. Let's see. Okay. That's pretty nice. I'll do another one of those. The comfrey shake. Yum. Now I'll put some seaweed in. Okay, a bit of seaweed. See how this looks in the blender. Ooh, it's like a soup. Mmm. Another one of those. Ooh, it's delicious. I'll get one more seaweed. I don't know if my neutral bullet was happy for that. 
It was a bit of hard work, wasn't it? Okay, last thing is the coffee. Coffee grounds. Two, three, yeah. All right. One more banana, maybe two. One more. And this one we've got comfrey, kelp, coffee. And this one we've got our banana smoothie. So I'm gonna put about half of this in this one. And about half in this one. And then I'm gonna put about half of my black strap molasses. Half in there. And the other half in here. So now I'm gonna put the rest of the water in. So it brings it up to 10 liters. I'm gonna give this a good old mix now. All organic matter and all the gunk is gonna float on top and my juice is gonna be nice and clear in the bottom. That's why my tap is in the bottom. I'm gonna give that a bit of a mix. I might just boil the jug first and um, sterilize my garden fork. Mix a bit. I'll mix this molasses around a bit and this bacteria juice. And after seven days, the, 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 the colony's eaten enough and expanded enough for you to start using it on your garden. When I use it on the garden, I just use 100 milliliters and 10 liters of water, about. It's about one of these little cupfuls and 10 liters of water. That's about how much you use when you're watering it on your garden. And I use this mixture. This is my nitrogen, my nutrients, my stuff for making the roots strong and the leaves strong and the cells strong and get it going nice and strong. And then this one, this is the potassium. This is when everything starts to fruit and flower and produce. So when you start to give it the potassium. You can also give it this as well at the same time. Okay, this just has to sit now for about seven days before this colony multiplies and after seven days you can start using it. You need to keep these in the dark and in a cool place and it'll last for six to 12 months. The next video coming up is really gonna be exciting because I use this also in my compost to speed up my compost. I can make a compost in 21 days. Thanks for your, all your great comments on my videos, everybody. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about the soil bacteria and how to make your own fertilizer. Oh yeah, the winner of the mushroom video so what I'm going to do is, um, the winner of the competition is going to be announced now. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I haven't forgotten about the mushroom competition. I'm just sitting here counting mushrooms. Oh, I'm actually counting stones for each mushroom or mushrooms. Well, perfect little environment for mushrooms. The mushrooms, 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 mushrooms. <laughs> so the mushroom competition. Oh. But if you're not the lucky winner, don't be despaired because you can still get these mushrooms on my website and you can get them at a 5% discount. So remember to use the promo code Weedy Garden and you'll get 5% discount off these. And when these mushrooms get established in here, I'm gonna take, oh, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something about our wonderful little mushroom friends. They're good for your body. Some of them are good for your mind. Beautiful, healthy little <laughs> mushrooms. There you go. Enjoy your gardens. There's no more. Enjoy your lives. Nice day, and I'll catch you later. Pause. See, there we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. There was a lot of people that guessed 40. And if you want to hear more, it goes like this. Mushrooms, mushrooms, some 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 Mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms. The mushrooms, mushrooms, mushroom, mushrooms, mushrooms, and mushrooms, mushrooms, mushroom bed. The mushrooms in my mushroom bed are mushrooms, mushroom friends, or mushrooms. And all the answers I got, all the correct answers, I've got in my hat here, and Dad's hat. I don't know, just so you can see, you know, each one is 
Each one has got a little subscriber on it, see? They're all different. Just so you can see. Alrighty. Chuck them in. You can see the hat. Nothing in the hand. <laughs> I take this one. This one. This one is. I have to get me spectacles. And I have to read this. This is exciting. Oh, this is this is the second time I've done a guessing competition. Well, it's not actually a guessing competition. It's a fact competition. Oh, before I actually tell you who it is, I've got to say every time I said the word spore on that video, I meant to say the word spawn. Because if I haven't said it already, a spores is like the dust. It's like the seed out of the mushroom. See this mushroom? When it comes out of the ground and flowers, it produces tiny little dust and that goes off in the wind. And that's the spores. And they'll go and land anywhere. And if they find a nice spot to get established, then that's when they start to sit out their little kind of roots, which we call the spawn. Because the spawn. So what we get in here is that white mycelium kind of stuff we call the spawn just so you don't get confused. And um, I also didn't know when I made this video that I can't send these overseas. So hopefully the winner is Australian. If not, if the winner, if you are the winner and you're from overseas, just send me an email and we'll find something else for you because I've got lots of really cool stuff on my website actually. And lots more coming as well. But I'll read the winner out and it is Jennifer Goodall. Oh, how about that, Jennifer? I counted 40 times that you said mushroom or mushrooms. I love your videos. When I discovered your channel, I binge watched them all. Oh, well. When my youngest granddaughter visited, I played several for her. She's only five, but she was fascinated. Yeah, kids like the weedy garden, and they'll really like that too. So, um, Jennifer, if you send an email to me, and you can find my email on theweedygarden.com. I hope you're from Australia. If not, we'll figure it out. Okay, that's it for that one. And um, I'm going to just go back and clip, click back to the ending of the video, which I already did. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something about um, lactobacillus bacteria and how amazing they are for us and how helpful they are in our garden. So until next video, have a nice day. Enjoy your gardens. Enjoy your lives. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.